Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Welcome back to another Zippo Artist live stream. My name is Danny Jordan. So excited to be chatting with you all again today. Maybe some of you were here last month for our live with Sean Dietrich. Had a blast chatting with Sean. Uh, prior to that, we connected with our good friend Guy Harvey. Got to see his incredible uh, new lighter that he designed for us. I'm sure many of you out there got yours. If you did, let us know in the comments. What's really cool about this artist live stream series is this is a great opportunity for you to learn more about the artists who are designing these very cool, unique designs that you all love so much and you love to collect and you love to have uh, in your home, in your office, wherever you are utilizing those designs. Um, but you guys are a part of the conversation as well. So I want to know, have you picked up any of the past lighters that we have featured on the live series? Let us know in the comments. And I also love knowing where are you watching what's so cool about uh this world that we live in is that we are also connected and we have people from all around the world watching so let us know what country if you're here in the us what state you are watching from i asked last time uh how many lighters you have in your collection i always think that's a fun question uh to ask as well so so feel free to get active in the comments you guys are a huge part of the artist live stream series and when we get to our q a section with today's artist you your voice will be included in that. So if you have any questions for our artist who's joining us today, John Eggleston, please make sure to drop those in the comments and we will be asking those throughout the live. Um, I'm so excited to, to chat with John today. I just got to meet John the other day. You know, we had Sean Dietrich, we had Guy Harvey, who we mentioned earlier, but John is, is on the inside. John is lead designer and illustrator at Zippo Manufacturing Company. Uh, he first joined Zippo back in 2011 as a contract artist, and it was only three months before he simultaneously fell in love with the work and was offered a permanent position in Zippo's design center. That was, my gosh, John, 12 years ago. And now here we are getting to chat live. How are you, my friend? I'm doing pretty well. Excited to be doing this. I'm excited to be chatting with you. I love uh, your your background. It's very eclectic. I feel like it's a little tease of what we might be seeing here today. You know, what's fun about this artist live stream series is that you all who are watching get to see exclusively the drop of the new lighter that is being made available. And it's a very exclusive drop. There are only 250 units available, just like we did with our previous lighters. So you're going to want to stick around because I got the box here. And I, if there's one thing that's true in this world, John, people want to know what's inside the box. Oh. And we're going to show them later on. But first, you know, I want to dig into your story a little bit. You know, you and I got to chat offline a little bit the other day. Um, and I, I want to share with our audience out there because I think it's just so cool when you get to meet an artist and you hear their process. Um, but I want to go back a little bit. In 2011, when you got hired as a contract artist for Zippo, how cool was that experience to get hired by Zippo? And then how cool three months later to be offered a permanent position? Um. In all, it, it was really a very surreal experience. Uh, <clears throat> I was actually going to school to be a writer at the time. Oh, wow. um, I, I hadn't, I never had any intention whatsoever on being a professional artist. Uh, but um, I went to school and while I was there, I met my wife and we decided to have kids. And at that point, <laughs> I needed to get a job immediately instead of just being a student too. And um, Zippo happened to be... Uh, advertising and I is something that I know how to do. I've always just done artwork. And so I applied and uh, they brought me in and it was, the whole experience was just, like I said, very surreal. I um, kind of just got put back in a corner and they <laughs> had me doing some basic stuff. And Molly, the woman that hired me had completely forgotten about me. <laughs> like, yeah, when she came and talked to me, but she, she forgot like the, the terms of our, you know, our agreement and everything. And so I was hired for a few months stint. And on my last day, I had like, I don't know, probably about 15 jobs. And I went in and I handed them to her. I'm like, I, you know, I really enjoyed working here. Thank you. And she looked at me like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like, this is my last day. And she said, no, no, hold it. Stay right there. She went and walked out and talked to her manager and came back. She goes, no, you're going to start working here on uh, Monday full time. And so, I mean, it was, it was really neat. And uh, I was very excited because like I said, I didn't have any intention on being an artist ever and just absolutely fell in love with the artwork, with, with, with the whole job, with the people, the, the whole process behind it. Uh, yeah. So it, it was very serendipitous and worked out incredibly well. 
Yeah, I mean, if, if that's not, you know, a, a life lesson for so many people out there that you just never know what happens or is what is what's going to happen when you say yes. Uh, and you said yes to this opportunity. And now 12 years later, you are your lead designer over there, which is just incredible. You know, speaking of art, speaking of the designs that you do, tell us about your process behind these paintings specifically that we see sitting uh, behind you. Um. Well, they originally, we, we get like work orders from our sales associates and I'm not going to go into that process, but this had come across my desk. Um, and it originally, they just wanted a quick digital design. We were trying to figure out something for uh, our Founders Day celebration a couple of years ago. And um, I, I really love uh, Van Gogh's work. <clears throat> um, he, I, I have like a bit of a, a connection with him. Uh, he has a background or his, he lived most of his life dealing with mental illness. That's something mm. art is actually my tool and was my tool. That's why I said it was never supposed to be a profession. It was just my tool for managing my own, uh, my own mental illness. It was what right. I kind of figured out. So there's, there's that connection. Um, but uh, one of the big things I am colorblind. And so mm. I have a hard time differentiating a lot of, different color tonal ranges. There's some colors I simply can't see. There's some colors that um, it, it's just, it's very hard. And being a professional artist, it's a bit of a challenge to overcome. Right. And there's a lot of digital tools, a lot of really great tools like in Photoshop and Illustrator that help me differentiate colors on screen, but it doesn't, it, it's kind of like a, a, just treating the symptom. It doesn't treat the cause or treat the problem. Mm. So doing, artist studies like this doing uh, where I study somebody else's artwork and do traditional paintings uh, covering that really helps me to be able to differentiate a lot of the really minor subtle, subtle tones between colors. Um, right. Like with these specifically with uh, like the blues, purples are big ones for me. Uh, reds, greens, all of that stuff. It, it all kind of blends together. And so when I do this stuff and when I go over and over again, with it, it it helps me better be able to use and tell what the different colors are. Van Gogh specifically uses bright, beautiful colors. So it, it's just, he's a fantastic tool for that. And one that I've gone to many times and I've done a lot of uh, studies of his work. Right. So you mentioned being colorblind and, and I'd imagine, I know when you and I and our, you and I were chatting the other day, I, I would guess that a lot of people when they hear, Oh, someone's colorblind, maybe getting into art, wouldn't be something they would suggest. Did you ever encounter anyone on your road, uh, you know, throughout your years of education who maybe said you shouldn't pursue this as a career? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I, everybody is generally surprised when I tell them that I'm colorblind, especially because I, my work, my personal work is very, very colorful, very bright. Um, mm. it generally matches my shirt actually. Uh, but <clears throat> I remember at one point um, I was actually taking um, just an elective graphic design course and I had uh, a professor just tell me, you know, I need to give up. Don't consider being an artist. If you're colorblind, you can't be an artist. You, wow. you know, can't do any. He's ironically not teaching at the school <laughs> anymore. <and laughs> I have a fantastic job and have had a great career. Yeah, no, I, I think it's incredible. You know, I, I talk a lot about this, that I think oftentimes our differences are what give us um, our superpowers in life. And I just love that, you know, somebody said something to you, but you didn't let that derail you. You had this passion uh, of yours in life, but also something that was very um probably provide a lot of healing for you as well as you talk about, you know, mental yeah. health issues, um, having this, this outlet, um, to, to process. Um, I think it's amazing. So, you know, speaking of school, you know, where did, where did you go to art school? Um, I didn't actually go to art school. I took some yeah. graduate courses, uh, several years after I had become a professional, Okay, um, but on the whole, I, you know, I, I started doing art when I was, well, I, I don't. I don't remember a time when I didn't do artwork, uh, mm. and so by the time I was like 11, 12 years old, I always had a drawing pad. I always had pencils. I always had pens. I always had something. I was always sketching. I was always um, drawing, sculpting, whatever I could get my hands on. And mm. um, focusing in, like when I, um, I deal with a lot of depression and anxiety, focusing in on things really helps with that and yeah. so like 
learning and teaching myself art theory, which is surprisingly complex. And I mean, it actually takes several years of um, education to be able to get really get it down. Uh, but for me, just focusing in on that, nerding out on that, trying to figure out, like, teach myself art theory is, you know, one of the tools that really helps me calm and, and balance mm -hmm. out, level out my, my head and everything. And so that's where I learned to do art. Um, it was, you know, at night, alone, in my bedroom, you know, facing my demons and drawing yeah. and sketching it out. Uh, you know, and it, it eventually at some point, I don't know when, just kind of became a part of who I am. And yeah. so, um, like I said, later in life, I, I did take some, some illustration courses because I wanted to hone my skills a little bit more. Um, but even that, more than anything, was just teaching myself a little bit of discipline. Right. You know, speaking of honing your skills, I'd love if we could pull up, there's a time lapse we have of how you did those two pieces that are sitting right behind you. Oh, I love this. Time lapses are, are my favorite. Yeah, I, it's, I, I love seeing things go from beginning to end, and I actually haven't seen these all the way through yet, so um, it is neat to see. Yeah, that's really, really cool. I mean, I just I love the idea that when you step up to a canvas, it's empty, and then when you're done, you've created this thing, you've brought this thing that didn't exist to life. Well, one of, one of the things that I love is that, you know, I did several sketches of it first, um, for several digital sketches and then um, several acrylic sketches before doing the final paintings. And um, there's a change overall. And I, obviously I can't show that because you don't, you guys don't see all of the, um, all of the stages from the very beginning, but uh, the, by, by the time I get to the end, of it i actually am putting on paper what's in my head or putting on canvas what's in my head and mm -hmm. <clears throat> to be able to do that is something that just you know it, it's hard to really explain how good it feels just you get done yeah. you're like holy crap that was what i wanted to do <laughs> i did that on purpose <laughs> that's incredible do you ever as an artist get into a work like that that maybe you sketch out to be a specific way but as you start working with the paint does it, does the vision start changing for you throughout the process? Yeah. So, well, actually um, that does speak to a lot of how I learn now, a lot of artists and I should follow this practice, but we'll do uh, sketching prior to with mm. these, I had the convenience of having basically unlimited time to do them. Um, so I was able to do that, but for the most part, um, like my, my uh, load is, like all of ours, very high. I think I did something like seven or 800 individual pieces of art last year, not including wow. concept work that, that doesn't get recorded in that, that manner. So I don't usually have time. And so for the most part, like doing illustration work, what I've learned to do is sketch while I go along. I have okay. a big idea in my head. Um, I get that down on paper or well, actually usually on screen. I work on primarily digital, but um, I get that down and then by the time I'm done with it, it's what I had in my head, but it's totally different than what I had originally started doing. If that wow. makes some sense. Yeah, it's sort of like jazz music. You know, Very like, much, you yes. Know, you know where you sort of want to go yeah. and you know you want it to sound really cool, but how you're going to get there and what notes you're going to play along the way, you sort of just figure yeah. out. It's that, That's honestly a really great analogy, and it's a really great analogy for how we work at Zippo mm -hmm. because we have such an unbelievably high turnaround time. I mean, <clears throat> um, other jobs I've seen, people have, you know, two, three weeks to work on a single piece of art, whereas I have maybe three hours at most. And, you know, so it, it very much is a uh, stream of consciousness on the flow kind of thing. Amazing. I'm seeing a lot of questions that are coming in uh, from everyone who's watching from around the world. I think we've got Spain here. I saw pop up. We've got a bunch of people here in the States, like Minnesota, Ohio, Georgia. Um, I see a lot of questions popping up, you know, about the, you know, the question around, are these going to be signed by John? And there will be a certificate of authenticity that is uh, going to be signed by John. And there will be 250 units that will be available exclusively on Zippo.com as soon as we wrap up the live here. So um, this feels like, I feel like we're almost at the point to reveal. I, I want to make the people wait just a little bit longer 
longer. That's what makes shows like, you know, Storage Wars work so well is it's like, you know, the garage door closes and then they go to commercial and you got to come back afterwards. So we'll get to that um, in a moment. Um, but but I'm curious, uh, if you weren't making your living as an artist, what do you think you'd be doing? Um, well, I mean, I, I, my wife once said that I am very easily fascinated. And I, I think that's a pretty <laughs> accurate statement. I, I Maybe a kind way of saying I'm easily distracted, but... <laughs> Um, I, she, she also accurately pointed out one time, I, I've thought about this question many, many times, and it's always a different answer that I come up with, but she pointed out that I, I think I would honestly be happiest being a professional student. Um, mm. I, I love learning. I, I love challenging professors. <laughs> I, love, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I just, I, I, I love growing and, and gaining um, experience and gaining knowledge. Right. Uh, and so, I mean, I, I think if anything, that would probably be it. Um, that or independently wealthy or both. I mean, why not have it all, yeah. you know? You know, I mean, but if I'm going through things, as they say, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so you said earlier that you do, you've done over 700 designs in, in, in a year. Is that what you said? You usually do over 700 designs in a year? That's incredible yeah. to be able to tap into that much creativity. That's well, what I, I mean, I, I we do a, a very wide range of work, and so um, a lot of it is just simply adapting a client's logo for our lighter surface or for one of our other product surfaces. Right. Um, but I mean, still, yeah, it's it's a very taxing job, in in terms of creativity it's uh it, it really pushes the bounds i think uh right. it's, it, it takes a certain kind of mindset um i love that i get to bounce all over the place everything i'm doing um the last couple of days i've spent doing a digital painting um but throughout there i've also had to do probably about 10 other designs of varying you know just styles uh types of decoration um and we have to be able to know all of that stuff and be able to adapt right. very easily it's incredible um well i think we've made the people wait long enough this feels like a good time to reveal the design and the lighter and i know that we have a really cool uh time lapse so i'm going to open up the box here and we're gonna we're gonna go full screen to get a look at your design let's pull this out of the box this is the first time people are seeing it and maybe some people put the pieces together that that art you are seeing behind john uh here right now is uh the design that you're going to get on this brand new exclusive drop lighter 250 units that will be made available at zippo.com uh, with a signed certificate of authenticity uh from john himself we've got the sort of starry night inspired design there um, and, and what's really cool, I, I think we need to point this out and, and, you know, if our production team can go full screen with the, uh, the video, uh, here in a moment, I think it's really cool. John, can you tell the people what these buildings are that are on the front and the back of the lighter? Uh, yeah. So on the front is our, uh, museum, our Zippo case visitor center. Um, and then on the back is the, our factory actually, um, that they're both kind of in the same lot everywhere or there. So it's supposed to be a night and day of that area. Very, very cool. Let's let's take a look at, uh, I know we've got a video that we can show everyone uh, of this specific design so they can see it really big and beautiful. Let's go ahead. And Wow. Wow. So cool. So much better than me holding it up to the camera <laughs> as well. Am I right? Um, and this is, this has the, the 540 uh, technology on it, correct? Uh, no, it's actually a double-sided color image. Oh, double-sided. Uh, oh. It's so, I mean, it, it, that's another thing we don't do very often. It's uh, makes it a little bit extra special. Yeah. It's really, really cool. I love that you get two. It's like you're getting two for the price of one here, folks, which is really, really cool. Now, what I love about Zippo is that it's very collaborative. Uh, and we have another individual that's going to be joining us here. Speaking of two for the price of one, you're getting two guests 
for the price of one on this live stream here today. Please uh, welcome in from the team over at Zippo. We have our friend Jennifer Ward. How are you, Jennifer? I'm doing well. Hi. It's good to talk with you today. <laughs> welcome to the party. I know you've been sitting in the green room backstage sort of watching John and I get to get to have some fun out here. Welcome. I'm so excited to have you here, Jennifer. Um, you know, you have a very un unique perspective on everything that happens over at Zippo. Can you tell us a bit more about the process of creating designs? Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we have, as John alluded to before, you know, we have work orders that come in because various customers will request a design, have us work with their logo, perhaps. But we also have a collaborative process for coming up with brand new concepts that we can put on our products for new catalog selections every year. Mm. We do that a couple of times a year. And that process generates thousands of designs as well. I, we have an in-house team of seven artists full time. Okay. And a lot of them are specialists in things that they really enjoy doing. But as John said, too, we have to be generalists and be able to understand the different processes. There's different ways we can decorate the lighter. Everything from full color like you see to, you know, there's carved lighters that really, you know, engrave deeply into the metal and really give you a great feel. And so, you know, in an in a annual cycle, we can produce, you know, more than 8,000 designs wow. with just the same seven people. And yes, that's a range of simple logos all the way up to yeah. fully creative original stuff. So it's, it's a wonderful variety. That's incredible that a team of seven is putting out over 8,000 designs. You know, quick math, that's over on average over a thousand designs per person, which yeah. is amazing. So let's give it up, honestly, for the design team at Zippo and all of the incredible work that, that you guys are doing. I'm sure our audience are huge fans of all that you that you do. And, and speaking of um, designs, do you have a favorite? I'll, I'll open this up to, to Jennifer and John. Do you do you each have sort of a favorite uh, Zippo design? Uh, I have my Book of the Dead design. Oh, yeah. I think yeah, they might have Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Look <laughs> at this thing. Are you kidding me? That thing's awesome. Honestly, not just like lighter cool. This is like one of the coolest things I have ever seen. And and full disclosure, this was shared with me the other day. And honestly, I'm still enamored. Like it's, and, it, and let's talk to the people. Like this isn't just some sort of printed element. Like this is actually etched, what is it, laser engraved into the, the lighter? Uh, we have a... Uh, deep engraving process that yeah. we use okay it's <laughs> proprietary is, is really that's, what that's we're going for there <laughs> deep engraving process is john sitting there one by one just etching it in <laughs> i actually did do that many years ago for a social media project that never went anywhere but i found hand engraved a couple lighters really yeah i mean if you look at this it's just it's absolutely gorgeous you can see if I can put it in front of the camera, yeah. <laughs> um, just oh my God, I'm terrible at this. How how much it it, it gets in there and it's so I mean, just it's I, it's one of the most stunning lighters I think I've done, and I love the subject matter. So yeah, speaking of the subject matter, what what are we seeing there? Because when I saw this the other day, I said, "Is that an octopus?" <laughs> and you had to drop some knowledge bombs on me. So I knew yeah, what I was at. Um, it's all based off of the universe created by H.P. Lovecraft. Um, many years ago, he created this weird horror world that had all these like alien gods that, um, you know, whatever. A anyways, uh, Cthulhu was one of them and has kind of become the most famous. And all of these other like artists and writers and musicians and tabletop gaming enthusiasts have created this extensive massive like global cultural universe based around these handful of characters and so this is my contribution to it and um it incorporates a whole bunch of stuff there's some actual uh sigils from demonology there are some egyptian and uh, mesopotamian symbols and stuff in there and then wow. a little octopus guy on the bottom right there that is so cool. Now, is that is that your best selling design that you've ever done? Your best selling lighter? Do you know? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, I think that's what I was. I know it's like one of the top sellers right now on Zippo.com. 
It's uh, frequently out of stock. Yes. <laughs> but it's in stock right now. Yes. And, yes. you know, talk about burying the lead. What's really cool is that all of John's collection currently on Zippo.com is is up for free shipping right now through May 22nd. So if you see that design, uh, the design that we're, we've revealed here today, and you're like, gosh, I love John's work. I need to get a few of these for my collection. Uh, until May 22nd, Zippo is offering free shipping through Zippo.com. So go get yourself a few designs. Heck, buy five of that one that John just revealed and, <laughs> and give them out like as presents. Like, I, I said the other day, I said, I feel like that's like something Indiana Jones would be like chasing down in some like temple or cave somewhere. It, it's just, it's so transcendent. It's really, really, really cool. Um, so, you know, we've talked a lot about, you know, seven, 8,000 designs a year. How many designs have you each created in your career at Zippo? Do you know? Career. Oh, that's a good one. Um, I think the last time I went and looked up how many I've designed, because I started as an entry-level artist. I was hired just a few months before John was, and then they found him wandering the building, you know, and we <laughs> um, didn't wander. No, you didn't wander. You stayed in your I corner. Quietly you quietly well. corner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every now and then someone would throw you a donut, everything was fine, you know. Um, but I, I, I've been with the company, you know, over 12 years, almost 13, and I think I've I want to say that I've probably created just over 5,000 designs over that time. Wow. And again, it's a mix of, you know, customer logos on up to fully creative stuff. I, I can't stop making art, which, you know, mm. it's, it's tough when I'm also trying to organize and balance workloads for everyone on the team, which is part of my job. But I do sneak as much time as possible to draw because that's what I love too. So working with John is fun. We chat every day about all the different kinds mm. of work we have on our plates and, the variety, I think, is what helps keep the whole team, you know, fresh. Because if you have different creative challenges, sometimes it's just problem solving where you're saying, okay, I've got this logo. How do I make this look absolutely the best it can on this tiny canvas? You know, our lighters are small. <laughs> and so to make right. a big impact on a small space, you know, we're producing treasures for people. It's true. It's incredible. Uh, I saw someone in the comment section earlier said Zippo equals timeless. Um, and I think that's so true and how cool that like as an artist, you create this art that's going to, you know, li outlive you, um, which is yeah. really, really cool. Uh, what's your favorite part? I want to know each of you, what's your favorite part about working at Zippo, Jennifer? Oh, well, for me, I think it is the challenge. It's, it's constant problem solving. And uh, to kind of borrow from something John said earlier, I, I also love ongoing learning. I geek out on pop culture. I love it when a customer <laughs> comes in with a challenge. And we're trying to formulate something really cool for their market, something that they know is going to be a bestseller for them. And then I'm thinking, okay, what do I know? What's my experience? What colors are going to be cool? Or what engraving is going to look awesome? And so, you know, we work on such a variety. I think it's that ongoing learning and being able to geek out as much as I like. And somehow it, it serves my work. You know, I love the yeah. fact that fun can serve work. So Agreed. It, it, it goes together well. So Love it. What about you, John? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's. Don't worry, all your bosses are watching. No, there, right there, no, there, no there, there are a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of, of aspects of it that I've like. I've had some really fantastic opportunities at Zippo. I've managed to work with like rock stars, meet little rock stars. Um, I was briefly famous in Germany. Um, Whoa! For, yeah, yeah. It, we, I, I featured that needs to go on your resume. Special no, I, skills. I, 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 well, I wasn't like Hassel, Hasselhoff famous, but uh, <laughs> you know, I like I was I was featured in GQ on, in in Germany because of Zippo, and like I've had all these really weird, just fantastic opportunities that I never would have gotten anywhere else. Um, but I also something that you you had just said that I love the idea that while I'm not a known artist, I, you know, anybody who hasn't watched this specifically, my screen just went off. Um, anybody who hasn't watched this isn't going to know my name, but I have sold thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces of art. There are right. thousands of people who have made the decision to buy my art and not a lot of even very well-known artists can say that. Right. That's the How truth. cool. I still yeah. get completely jazzed when I see one of my pieces out in the wild. I've bought them at convenience stores. I mean, you know, I could probably get it in house somewhere, but I can't help it. If I see it somewhere 
I don't think right now yeah. they made that. <laughs> Yeah, it's so incredible as an artist to sit there. You know, you oftentimes you know can't see the forest through the trees. Sort of you know situation where, like you're saying that anywhere in the world right now, somebody could be walking into a gas station, a convenience store, whatever, and there's a there's a, a display there, of Zippo lighters, and they see some design that you created, and yeah. your what your mind created connected with them in some way, and they make that decision to make that purchase, and then that lighter goes on camping trips or, or wherever it sort of goes in their life um, becomes a part of them. I think that's really, really cool. And what, what a cool aspect of what you guys do over there at Zippo. Speaking of uh, designs that inspire this design, John's newest design here is available as soon as we wrap up our live, which will be here uh, in a matter of moments at zippo.com. There's 250 only 250. John is signing the certificate of authenticity. So if you want to get one of these very, very cool, unique designs that features, uh, you know, the, the building, the offices, as well as um, the manufacturing facilities for Zippo, you're going to want to get this. I, I consider myself fortunate um, that I have one. Uh, and we are going to be coming back with another artist live stream very, very soon. If you are not following Zippo on social media, please make sure you do so. That's where all the updates get posted on Instagram on Facebook, on YouTube. Um, you can also sign up for an email newsletter over at zippo.com. So that way, whenever the information is available for all of these cool artist live streams that we're doing, you will be the first to know and you can come back and make sure that you are one of the 250 that gets one of these very, very exclusive, very cool, very unique lighters. Uh, John, Jennifer, I've had an absolute blast chatting with the two of you today. Uh, like I said, we'll be back with another artist live stream very, very soon. Um, and check the check the comments right now. I think the team at Zippo is going to be dropping a link in the comments for this video. That's a unique link that's going to get you over to Zippo.com. That way you can get your lighter and get them before they sell out because these things are selling out very very fast. Again, John, Jennifer, thank you so much. And thank you everyone who uh, watched here today. Again, my name is Danny Jordan. Having a blast doing this artist live stream. Have a great, uh, great day. Great rest of your week, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. See ya. Thanks.